Well, hello, good people. Today, we're going to take a look at Leonardo AI's post to image feature. And I also want to give you a couple updates on the training models that I've been working with. Now, the way this works is you simply grab a photo with a particular pose you want to use for an image that you want to generate with your prompt. Head over to the left side of the menu and under image to image, click on this section here, import your image that you want to use to pose. And once you have an image loaded, you'll see this option post image. If you hover over the question mark, it says that you need to use a model that's trained on stable diffusion 1.5. The model I'm using is called Fine Tuned Illustration version 2. As you see here, it's got SD 1.5. Now, how you can find that information is if you go on the drop down here and you select a custom model, for example, and you want to use one of the platform models. Let's say I wanted to use RPG here. You can see under base model version 1.5. So I've got a pretty simple prompt here that I'll leave in the description below and also pop it on the screen. I'm going to leave the default settings. The scheduler is at Euler discrete guidance scale at seven step count at 30. The other important thing is that whatever image you're using as a reference image, you need to use the same dimensions. Otherwise it's going to look stretched and that's pretty much it. You click on generate and let's see what we come up with. Let's take a look at the rendered results. So we see this first one here. It's almost got the pose right, but the, the head's looking the other way and the arm's not really leaning in here. This one's a lot closer, but we've got two arms growing there. Could definitely fix that in post. This one's a little better. Some janky hands though. And I think out of all of them here, we have, in terms of the pose, the most accurate here but it does a pretty decent job. It's even rendering the bench and the environment similar to the image. So these two in terms of the head position are more accurate. So you might have to run it a few times to get the exact photo you want. That's just the nature of AI image generation. It's not always gonna be perfect. Here's a previous generation that came out really well. Now I want you to pay attention to this and uh, this is the next thing I want to talk about too. The face doesn't look that great and you see this weird kind of figure here. After upscaling though, you see that image is now <laughs> transformed and a whole lot better. The hands look amazing, even the feet, well, except for this one. And that weird little figure now became a cat, which I quite like actually. So I upscaled this again, and you see we have a different variation, better feet, the hands are okay, but a different cat too. One of the things I want to point out is that if your image doesn't look that great when you first generate it, chances are after you upscale it, it's going to look a lot better. Now regarding the pose, it's, it's pretty close to the reference image. And one of the things I liked is I didn't even identify what she was sitting on and it gave her sort of like this rock at the edge of a cliff, a very scary cliff to be on, but it looks amazing. Here's another one I did with a real photo of April and it did a pretty decent job. So here's the original. Just ignore the bench, the background. It didn't process the bench all too well, but after upscaling, it looks really fantastic. And, and the thing that I really was impressed was the crossed leg. Typically AI images has trouble doing that via prompts. So if you have a reference image, it's probably better to use a picture. Hands here are great, the cross legs. Unfortunately, there's some blending of the image here, but definitely workable. Here's another example using a different prompt. That's the original, and here's the upscale. And the upscale is totally transformed. I really love how this turned out. Let's move on to the trained models. So after a few tests, I had the suspicion that the training in Leonardo AI for people isn't really fine tuned for that. And I have confirmed that that is the case to a point. It's not really made for real photos or people avatars. However, with the upscaling, you can get better results. If we look at the generated images using the trained model that I first did, here's the original. It doesn't look bad, but you know, we need some work on the face. 
after the upscaling, you see that it smoothens out, makes it uh, a little bit more realistic, but the eyes still could use some work. Here's another image that was rendered with the train model that I used. And here's the upscaled version. So it looks much better. And I don't know why it didn't dawn on me to upscale the images at the time. I'm used to having the options to upscale or do face restoration separately. But with Leonardo AI, it's more of a restoration feature. Here's another image. Here's the original and there's the upscale. However, at least at the time of recording today, the post-processing feature could be a little bit overbearing, I find, especially with close-up portraits. This is another model that I trained based on Ryza, one of the talents that I often work with. And it's not terrible, except for the mouth and teeth. It needs some work. And the eyes could use some more too, but overall it, it's not bad and it has her likeness. It looks a lot like her. But once I go to upscale the image, it becomes over-processed. We lose a lot of the skin texture and a lot of the characteristics of the original image. The eyes are much better, but the mouth and teeth are worse. <laughs> and then it looks like over-photoshopped, if you know what I mean. With these two images, I could probably just mask in the eyes of the upscaled image and do a bit more post-processing. But the original image isn't that far off. But there are improvements coming very soon. Now with that being said, if you are using AI generated images, they seem to do a lot better. Out of curiosity, I took my OpenAI photo booth model of April, generated some images locally and used those for training. And in terms of results, I find that before upscaling, it worked a lot better. So here's an image of April without the upscaling. Here's the image after. Again, it looks a bit too over-processed. So I would actually stay with the original here and do my own post-production with this particular image. In the case of full body to half body shots, I find that it was doing better. Again, with the upscaled image, it would just kind of finish off the image a lot better. Although I'm not one to like that smooth skin look typically, I think for this fantasy style of art, I really like how it turned out. Now, if you're interested in getting early access, I encourage you to sign up, but just realize that there's been a massive influx of people. It usually takes about 24 hours to get approved, but it could take longer at the moment until things settle down. Now, if this happens to be your first time learning about Leonardo AI, make sure to check out these videos to get caught up and up to speed. For now, my friends, as always, I'll see you when I see you.